Hi, I'm Jono, and if you're new here, this is James, and I do pencil drawings. And so does James now, apparently. <laughs> Up until last week Friday, you were convinced you didn't know how to draw. No, I didn't know how to draw. Oh, okay. At that point, I actually <laughs> did not know how to draw. So Jono has taught many people how to draw, specifically at the moment through Patreon. So we decided to give Jono his ultimate test, to start someone from the lowest point of drawing ability and seeing where he could take someone, <laughs> that person being me. I've helped a lot of people learn how to draw, but that's through the internet and through YouTube. So there's been a huge distance between myself and people that I've been trying to help. Having someone who doesn't feel confident with drawing, being able to look over their shoulder and explain to them as they're working. It's really an exciting space for me to occupy. Just for the record, before this, my drawing ability was next to nothing. So we realized that it would be a rather unfair advantage if Jono and also Gemma could actually physically show me how to do things. So our rule was they were not allowed to touch any of the tools I was using. Stop trying to get me to touch them. <laughs> or the drawing itself. So I not, may not know a lot about drawing, but some people who do know a lot about something uh, are this video sponsor, Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> So the first thing we had to do was decide what I was actually going to draw. Yeah. For that, we dipped into some of the reference photos we created for the Patreon community and specifically chose a picture of... Maya. Maya is our studio puppy. If you're about to embark on a, on a drawing, and especially a drawing in the style that I wanted to teach you, you're going to get to points where you're struggling against something. And one of the ways to try and combat that is to work on a subject that you feel some other kind of connection to. I have big love for Maya, so it was quite a simple decision. We put all of the resources in the description below if you guys would like to draw along with this video. Then Jem helped me cut my paper to the right size and then we started working on the grid. So the grid is just to provide a layer of support so that you can get your proportions correct and it's also it helps with that reward feedback as well. You give yourself a higher chance of having a artwork that you're proud of. Specifically a two centimeter grid, why did we do that? One centimeter grid makes it a little bit easier to not make mistakes. Two centimeter grid is faster. You had a time constraint. So I just threw you in with a two centimeter grid. I think two centimeters is actually more than enough. So the actual process of it was measuring out what the canvas size was gonna be, marking two centimeters all the way up each side, linking them together so you got that grid. Can you explain just the process of applying the grid to the, to the image on Photoshop? Yeah, so it's pretty simple. You're gonna figure out the size of the paper that you're working on. Then you make sure that the canvas in Photoshop matches those exact dimensions. So in James's case, he was working on a 56 by 38 centimeter piece of paper. And then we apply a two centimeter grid on top of that. Mm -hmm. It's also important saying that we use Photoshop in this respect. Almost any digital photo editor, you can set the size of your canvas and then just take this grid that we have in the description and just line it up. And it just makes everything so much easier. In order for this grid to be a two centimeter grid, if you use our assets, then you'll have to set your canvas resolution to 240 PPI, pixels per inch. And then it was time for me to jump in and draw. So Jonah's suggestion was to start with the hard points, though Gemma did come up with an interesting idea, which is just fill out the outline as much as you can to help give that perspective. And that's what I decided to do. Going through square by square, I found that this is really where the grid comes in handy in a big way. With no marks on the page, it's hard to figure out where you are in ratio to things. And then I jumped into the face. I started with the nose just because it was the most out of focus. So I feel like it was the most forgiving to draw, mainly gunning for the shadow areas. So I know where I'm going and then I'll move on to the mid tones. The reminder that I kept telling myself was I can darken it later. So I don't need to make it as dark now. I will say that like initially I was like, why the f people put themselves through this? But I think I'm going to get lots of quick rewards now as I figure things out. Yeah. And then I just kept going from there, moving from the nose up to the face, still only working in the shadows and then moving down to that sort of darker area underneath her chin. And once you start working in the shadows, you really get a perspective of where all the shapes are going to take up. And also they are so easily identifiable. It, it sort of feels like when you're a kid again and you're just doing coloring in books. I wasn't concerned about getting any textures down, just the broad shapes. So I knew where everything was going to line up. Okay. So this is it's the, looking good. the end of the day, yeah. Yeah, so end of day one, you were pretty confident you were going to finish before the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. What happened? I think if we're talking percentage, I've done pretty well. This is all done here. Like all, everything around the head is done. Yeah, you've done a lot of work there. Yeah, on the interior, there's still some work to do, but I feel like I've got the main elements down. You do. And now it's just filling in. I'm going to be able to get the shapes done Mm. And then I think that will go reasonably quickly. I can imagine where 
things really take time is where mm. you get like that base level down mm. and then it's you could you could spend your whole life on one drawing <laughs> <laughs> just with like a mechanical no, no, eraser no. I'm going gonna, darker in certain areas and pulling out in certain areas i'm going to show you some techniques okay. that are going to speed things up I yeah. think, really nicely something we also need to just keep an eye on is mm. you're starting to dirty in mm. the area that's meant to be white mm. so i'm not allowed to touch that eraser as much as i want to but um, we Just need give to a little. You can, do, you can give a little. We need to really. <laughs> no. We <laughs> need to get some tissue paper under your hand so you can stop smudging. Day two. I'm just gonna finish doing the base layer today. That I'm sorting out the mid tone, and then John is gonna teach me how to emboss yeah, hair. Yeah. Spanish is gonna be very helpful. Yeah. Should be finished yeah. today. So I had the goal of finishing up all the hard points in the face, like the eye, but then I came to a horrendous realization. Okay. I think I've come into a major issue. So I think I skipped a row somewhere. So all the maths, everything's shifted up like one row. I might need to call John. What happened? So I've been doing some maths and I think I've messed up. Everything is one yeah. row yeah. up and everything here is one row down. I started this process by not enjoying drawing yeah. and not really getting it. Then I started to enjoy it and now I'm back to not enjoying it. It's so it. frustrating. You're going to have to Erase the parts that aren't correct. Okay. Yeah. I was concerned that that would be the answer that I would it get. Is. I'm going to finish it by the end of the day, so I'm not going to be in that space for that long, at least. Mm. Um, you plan on finishing this drawing by yeah, the end of the day? Yeah. So despite that very cocky confidence, I was extremely dispirited. Then started figuring out what was in the wrong place. Basically from the eyes down and then from sort of... Do dogs have collarbones? Sort of from the collarbones up and then being very careful to only take out what is necessary and then redrawing the grid just to make sure I did not make this mistake again. And then it was just a matter of getting back into doing the same stuff that I'd done before. I decided to move straight down from the eyes just so I could go block by block. I found that a potential issue was I would get distracted by the marks that had were still left after the erasing. So it required a lot of counting of the blocks just to make sure I was not, again, putting something in the wrong place. Because once you set one mark down, that will become your reference point moving forward for any area around that. Try to cover as much ground as possible. And I found myself jumping around a fair amount, not really finishing areas. And it mainly came out of a pl place of fear, I found. Just concerned that I was gonna make the same mistake. It's a headspace that you can get locked into. That's, that's something definitely to be aware of. Cool, yeah, I think you've done a good job of moving it. The only thing I was concerned about was the, the nose highlight there. Yeah. And I think it's fine, you've pulled out enough. What I'm just struggling with now is tone. Like this is mm. really dark and that feels like that should be what it is. But then if that is set as the black point. This so to just... get your darkest darks, yeah. you're going to use a piece of cotton wool. You're going to use um, graphite powder. Okay. And you're going to make tiny little circles with the graphite sure. powder, but it's a blunt tool. Can you just show me just quickly now? I'm not going to touch anything. And then it was time to learn about embossing. So you're going to scratch into your page paper in the shape of those hairs, but you're working blindly because you're not going to be yeah, able to see. I don't see. know where it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. So do do a lot in like hair shapes and then... Hair shapes? Well, like strands of hair. Am I gunning for the highlights or the mid-tones with this? Because you're I actually, imagine I'm going to You're actually in. You're drawing the individual strands of hair with this. Yeah. It's going to be highlights, basically. This is going to be white. Is that because when I apply the graphite, the graphite won't get into exactly. the grooves that the embossing makes? Yeah. yeah. Do a little strand or two and those will create like the illusion that there's more when we make it blurry. So I would do all of these tufts of hair mm -hmm. with this and then you can actually go over it with graphite. Because I was initially going to draw around that, but I think mm -hmm. that's kind of insane to do. It's not insane, it's how it's, how it's done, but you I want can't to do take that. a shortcut. Yeah, yeah. No. thank you. <laughs> it's yours now. So it's quite hard to see what I'm doing here, but I'm just trying to target all of the wiry, stark highlights in the hair, particularly in that chest area. Maya's hair is very wiry, so it lends itself to going extreme with your embossing. It's day three. I've relocated the whole middle section. You've moved the snoot. <laughs> and I've done all the hard, the hard dark areas, like mm. up here. I've done all of this embossing oh, over see. here. Another thing you've done well is that they are curving. They mm. can curve more though. Okay. And we can have some that like break the break the trend yeah, yeah. completely. Mm. You went over dark areas there, mm. right? That's not gonna come out yeah. because you've, okay. you've pushed graphite now into mm. the paper. The, the better way to do that would have been to erase with a mechanical eraser right. um, down can the I line. Still do that, no? You can still do that, but you'll have to do it Mm. just off of the line of the hair because where you push it in right. with the embossing tool you've yeah. sunk it in quite hard so that won't be as easily to erase. Right. That's kind of the technique that I would 
go for it. yeah is so pencil just... pencil cotton wool pencil cotton wool and you you alternate between them and you layer them and eventually you get this really beautiful middle ground which actually mm -hmm. starts to look more like that which i think is great okay cool um, so that I'm... texture is really like what you want out of pencil at the moment you're busy doing mapping here mapping here mapping here mapping here and you're falling around a little bit i think focus on an area commit to it and finish it you'll get an, you'll get a sense of how long it takes you to get that hyper realism that you're looking for you can problem solve textures within that area and you can start applying it. John, I saw straight through the fact that I'd been jumping around and this was where I really decided to go ham, trying as many techniques as I could to figure out what that mid-tone was going to be like. What I found was most helpful was figuring out which way the, the fur was supposed to go and then making 8B pencil marks in the direction of that hair many, 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 many times to give a texture. Even if you're going to smooth it out afterwards, that direction is super, super helpful in creating the illusion that all these tiny marks will accumulate into this sense of hair. It sort of starts in the middle of the bridge of her nose and comes outwards. So the hairs between her eyes are going straight up, but the hairs on her cheeks are sort of going diagonally down to the left and the right. It's really important to follow that direction and be sensitive to which way it's going because I found that really helpful in selling the image. Then I moved on to the eyes and I found spending a lot of time on the eyes and really focusing on all the tiny, tiny, tiny little individual shapes within the eyes was super, super, super important. I assumed that all of the space in between her eyes and on her forehead was really quite light, but what I eventually figured out was that there were a lot of shadows within that lightness and you sort of have to just take the 8B pencil and fill in very lightly, just shade over those sh sh shadows and make some really specific dark points to try and sell the illusion that there is a shadow for every highlight that is on her forehead. This was also where I figured out that the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser is the most amazing tool that we have in our toolbox. It is so sharp and so specific. All of this was done with the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. And again, you have to follow and respect that direction of the hair the same way that you did with the pencil. So everything is pulling in the same direction whilst at the same time acknowledging that hair is not uniform. And you have to sometimes break the trend of the hair, as Jono said, to make it look realistic. And where the challenge comes with the chest is that there are a whole bunch of little white tufts on there as well that are starting to come come through now with the embossing, but then you have to back those up with the Tombow Mono Zero to fill out the body of those tufts. What I found the particular challenge was there are these dark channels in between all the white tufts and you sort of have to draw those in with the pencil, but not make them look like they are straight lines. I grabbed the eraser and the blending stump just to smooth those out and do a little bit of overlap into the white tufts to make sure they didn't look too stark and uniform. There are so many isolated dark areas on this reference photo and I had to spend a long time really focusing on making sure all those dark points were consistent and in line with each other because that's something else that really sells the image. And then also it was just a constant experience of touch-ups, constantly going back over the same areas over and over again, taking things that I'd learned from before and reapplying them to other areas. It's changed quite a bit since you last saw it. Well done. Thank you, dude. Yeah. yeah I'm. Oh. I'm, I'm feeling very gassed about it. Mm -hmm. Started with like the eyes and the nose and this cheek here. Mm -hmm. And then just the more I did it, I jumped around a lot. Mm -hmm. Like I would do a little bit here and then I jumped there and I jumped there. But then the more that I did it, the easier it got. I think we can take it to the next level. Yeah. I think where you're at now is like hobbyist artist yeah. already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you can start like selling portraits of dogs. I was about to ask. <laughs> you know I was about I mean? to like, ask like how many thousands of pounds am I selling this for? <laughs> thousands. But I think I want to take you a little bit further. It means like honing in on very small key areas. For me, what I was struggling with is this sort of snout mm -hmm. area here, the sort yeah, of upper lip. That is, an, that is a problem area. Mm. That transition, the transition between what's blurred and what's what's focus. in focus. Sure. And the way you're gonna do that is through the tombow. So you're gonna keep your tombow sharp. This guy. Yeah, keep your tombow sharp. Stop trying to get me to touch that. <laughs> keep your tombow sharp and um, using the sandpaper is gonna be good. So you need to grind down some graphite powder and get, some, get a small bit of cotton wool, dab it in there. I really hope you keep that's that in gonna, the video. That's going to get cut, don't worry. I don't want to go directly on, Go surely. directly on. So that area is going pitch black, right? Press hard. And that's just naturally blended. Like there's no possibility yeah. for it being sharp. Would you recommend then that I take this graphite powder and use it down here? Yeah. Because as you said, there's like these black points yeah, I would just here. Down there. With your Tombow Mono Zero razor, yeah. I'd get one or two little hairs. It'll start suggesting that sense of the texture. Everywhere that it's dark like that, mm. get that to be your new mm. black point. So I'm leveling this up basically. You're leveling this I'm up. I'm going from like a matric, matric art prac to like 
something someone could put on their yeah. wall. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Exciting challenge, but still a tough thing to do. But we do have this new tool. I found that the graphite was super effective in getting that really consistent black point around all the areas that had to be dark. But just a reminder that the graphite is super, super, super soft. So you have to go back in with your erasers to make sure all the points that are supposed to be white in the image are still white in those areas there is a very, very sharp highlight around the eye that makes them pop in a really beautiful way. And I hadn't done that before. So I went back in with a Tombow Mono Zero, pulling out those whites and making sure there were still mid-tones in the center of the eye that were faithful to the reference image. How do you feel about what you've done? I'm really happy, but I'm just concerned that I'm making it worse now. Like nitpicking and getting so focused on certain things that I'm actually just destroying the illusions that I've built up already. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Man, I'm so proud. Thank like, you. I'm really, really yeah, proud of what I'm you've really, done. I'm, re I'm really stoked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, am I So, <laughs> I think you are, because I think you're, you've hit a wall that I don't yeah. think you're gonna get through very easily. Yeah. What I'm starting to feel now is that I don't know where to go next. Exactly, Like, yeah. I can't look at this and look at this and be like, okay, this is clearly wrong, I need to fix right, this. Right. Without having either you or Gemma be like, no, do that. Hands on, yeah. yeah. And now with the image finally completed, we can go back to the studio. If anyone has uh, given that image a shot and done a drawing, please send it through. Uh, send yeah. it on Instagram or on Facebook or It'd comments. It would be really cool to, to critique those. Yeah, actually. yeah. I guess with, with, with that all said and done, there's only one more place to go. James made me do this by myself. Um, but before I end this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. I've been working with them for a couple of years now and they've played a huge role in my career. Not only in helping me maintain this channel by sponsoring these videos, but early on in my career, I was looking for a way to showcase my work and I felt that Squarespace did that effortlessly. I never had to patch or upgrade anything. I could register a domain with them or set up an online store. More importantly, I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. One of the more unique aspects that Squarespace has been offering is being able to monetize certain aspects of your website with their membership platform. So if you're looking at building a website, give Squarespace a try. And if you decide that you love them, use the software code and get 10% off your first purchase. Cool, I was really excited about this draw, this video idea. Mm. I thought it was cool to teach someone hands-on. Mm. And what's especially- oh, Hello. Oh, Maya. Mm. I don't know if you guys can see her. I think I take a lot of what's going on in my head when I'm problem solving for granted. Mm. And so teaching someone and looking at the techniques that I'm employing through fresh eyes, mm was really, really helpful. Like, I, I don't know what it's like to struggle with certain things because I've... They, they're the problems that were solved a long time ago and I've forgotten about them. So it's really, really nice to to have a new appreciation for, for the practice. It really, like, it injected a kind of a new sense of pride in, in what's going on. So I hope you enjoyed this dive into teaching someone from scratch how to draw. It was really fun from our side and uh, hopefully there's some good information for you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for the support. Bye.